had a philosophical stance, and we talked about this all the time. I think ours would be five basic points. Number one, we are always going to try to protect the quarterback. I know it's not to myself before the, before the day is over, but if you bring a I'm going to block you. You may be better than I am, but we're going to put a body on you. We're going to try to put a body on you. We have very little hot stuff. We want that quarterback to know exactly what's going on. If and feel comfortable that the fact that he's going to have the pitch. If we have a hot guy, he knows exactly we point to him. We make no bones about it. We point to the guy. We have the receiver point to him. The quarterback acknowledges that that's the guy we can't have. And then we'll be allowed to make the adjustments. Uh, we spend a lot of time. If there is our quarterbacks on the area, having to deal with the front seven. If he sees, uh, we tell him look at the, the, the secondary. If there's no chance of the eighth guy coming, he doesn't even worry about how the seven guys are going to be picked up. Okay? He, he knows that we got seven protectors, they got seven rushers. So we do not, and I think, I think he gets us in trouble at times. Um, and I'm, forgive me, I'm not a name dropper or anything. I don't mean to, to, to judge John to this stuff. But Steve Young came back. Steve Young came. Steve Young lives in Brooklyn. He lives right down the street. He said the biggest change for him was the fact that he had to recognize front end covers. We spent no time with our quarterback on the front set. If it's seven guys, he knows he's going to be fine. If that eight guy comes, we'll get him. You know, we that. Okay, that's number one. We're going to try to protect the quarterback. Number two, um, and this is going to sound corny, but it's the truth. We're always, we think we can control the football with the forward pass. Everybody says you can't, you know, the Woody's case says the two things, the bad things happen there. We think, we like to control football. We like to think we can't, which tells you one little thing. We're going to take the heck out of it. We played Air Force a couple of years ago, where we start the season on one and three. We're struggling. We don't know what to do. First conference game, our guy threw us 18 completions in the book. And I, don't, I don't say that to brag. I'm not a very good guy, but the fact is none of those passes were over. He got Things. And that's why we had that completion. And we pride, I, I don't know, we pride ourselves in that, but we worked like crazy on that. We just gonna, we were not going to give the ball up. Uh, that turnover ratio is really important to us, too. And we work hard. Okay, that's number two. Number three, and this is going to be corny, too, but we, we, uh, we're we going to take what he can give us. We're going to take what the defense gives us. And I'm the first guy to admit that a lot of times we don't know what the defense is doing. If we're not sure what the defense is doing, we're just going to attack portions of the football field until we can figure out what you're trying to do. I think defenses now are so good, so sophisticated, so tough that you know, we cannot, it's, it's difficult. And I don't care who you are, I mean, you sit in the box and somebody says, well, what covers you? And, and I'd be lying if I knew what it was. He said, geez, I don't have any idea. I mean, I, let me figure this thing out. Until we do that, we're just going to attack portions of the football field where we think we can go. Three guys are going to flood you here, we're going to flood you there until we can try to get Unless you're in Texas, we know you're going to be a man free and we're going to have to live in the daylight out of that. <laughs> okay, that, what is that, four? That's three. That's three. Number four, and this will, this, you'll really laugh about this one. Our runs are simply designed to accommodate the throw. Jack Tuff gives them a phone about a running game, and we'll go over a running game. But our running game basically consists of the one on the draw trap, the trap draw. We run and draw with trap protection, trap blocking. To take advantage of that hard upfield rush by the outside rush guy. If we, and in fact, I have a guy that helps, guys help me up with the box, and I spend my time, I, I find myself with my eyes on that weak outside rush. Because if he's coming, we trap him. If he's sailing in, then we think we can do it. It consists of the draw trap. We try to run a wide run, a sweep, or a quick toss to take advantage of those soft corners that are playing the pass. And then we basically run a counter. And we all, everybody really runs a counter. We do that because we like to play pass off. Not because we're a good counter team, but simply because we can come off the pass. Uh, and then this spring we moved around a little bit with that, I don't know what you guys call it, a little, little zone type thing. We got a big old line. We just come out and base block everybody. Just we call it a stretch. We're still physical. I'm not even sure we can do that. But that's our basic run game. That's, our, that's, that's about all we do. We, we try to run it from every conceivable formation. And we do have other <coughs> we, we, The runs are 
designed to accommodate what we're trying to do. And the last thing is we, we, uh, we kiss it. You know, it's an old, it's an old use acronym, but I think, and you will know this as we, as we go through this, we work hard to keep it real simple. We feel very strongly that uh, our kids have to know it. If our kids don't understand it, what good is it to have it in? Um, we have a meeting room just like this, and I'm, I'm selfish enough to, to, to keep, we have a running back coach, and we have another guy that helps with the quarterback team. There's three of us, and I, we meet, we just meet twice. Roger goes down there, Jack, and, and I, we stay and We keep them all together. Because when I talk to the quarterback, I want the tight end to know what they're talking about. I want the wide receiver on the back. We don't break it down. I mean, guys get after me because being a little bit selfish, like I'm trying to be the coach of all these guys. I'm really not. I just feel strong. And Doug Scoble told me that. Sure, he taught me that. But your kids have to understand what you want. And because of that, Jack said, you guys throw the 60 pass to the drop back. We do the same thing. We only have eight basic drops, 61, 62, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 69. We keep 68 as a game by game deal, uh, uh, game plan pattern. But that's the only route. So we go in the ball game, we got eight drop back passes, we have four or five runs, and that's it. That's, we just feel very strong about keeping it simple. Now we're going to present you defensively as many different looks as we can, formation wise, motion wise, and all that. But we're going to run the same thing wise to take more. And that's our philosophy. I could respond to that for hours, but that's basically our philosophy. We have a head coach that, that believes in the throw. When he designed, when he first got on board, he told, he told me the story many times. He just didn't think he could compete with the type of athletes that we could get at BYU, that he couldn't compete. They had one before. He said the only way he could do it was to throw the ball. And so he hired the people to throw the ball, and he gives, we throw the ball coming out of going. It really doesn't matter. Because he has that belief, and if we mess it up, we mess it up. But I think if we have a, a basic philosophical base, the fact that he's going to let us go to We come out to practice, he designs, he gives everything around what we want to throw. The rest of the practice has to fit into what we're doing, and then we put the ball into our bed, and we come back. The quarterbacks who throw, well, we're basically, the, you know, the whole practice section. You know, we spend some time with the team, and we're going to like that. This is, we, 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 we do nothing unique other than the fact that I think we do nothing but throwing I mean, we have a running game, but the fact that we lay our hat on the throwing game makes it, it's the only unique. I, I guarantee I'll, I'll draw the route that, and I'll let you make a lot of the almost inevitable to a few decision. It's just that he has made his hat on the fact that he's throw. That's philosophy. Whichever direction you want to go, I don't care. I'll talk pass pro, I'll talk uh, running game. So I'm going to talk pass protection first. Because uh, I still want to hopefully tomorrow. Pass pro wise, uh, again, you're going to kind of laugh at this, but we are very, very simple. What, what do you guys see more? Even odd stuff? You see it all? Hey, and I and Angelo are even front stuff. Even front? Even front for us is fairly, 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 uh, fairly standard. Something like this, I would guess. We're gonna we're just gonna base block everything. We 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 we, we zone more the, the, the front, you know, the middle three. We're just gonna go like this. And we try to stay big on big. Okay, that's basically all we do. Um we go into any kind of uh, odd front now. We 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 have three different protections. I'm sure you guys probably flew around with two of them. I don't know how you guys call this. We call them Will, Mike, Blue, and Stud. By game plan, and this is what, by game plan, we're going to be 
decide we all, the basic premise is we're going to put the backer on the back that is least likely to come. So by game plan, if you know that you guys that the defense defense likes to bring outside people, and we're just going to base up this too, like that. Ah, sorry. We're going to. If you like to bring your outside folks, then we're either going to slide like this.
just for us. For us, it doesn't, it doesn't change because we have such a hard time with it. That as long as seven guys are involved, we don't even care. None of these guys are concerned. But the minute number eight tries to make the playoff, now we have to know what to do. Okay. That's our basic class protection. That is our class protection. We don't do anything else. We do not do anything else. Always send him when we can. Try to stay big on the We'd like to do 
do this. Well, I, I can show you all the stuff later. But we like to do it out of something like this. <coughs> Things like that. Okay, so we paint the counter here, and we come out like that. We call it a major. Okay? But this guy now, this guy here, has to really, we really exaggerate the scoop. Okay, like we're running this crazy thing. Okay? We really exaggerate the scoop to try to get this, this thing to happen. And then we sometimes bring him, other times we just block the thing like the car and try to outrun this guy. Nobody. Nobody can run big with two things. Initially, when we put this in, we stole it from the U.S. Illinois. We put it without a protector. And we just said, well, you know, you look at the cooler or Like I told you, I, this is the guy I can buy on the Okay. And we just run it like this in three levels here. Like that. Okay. That, this, as far as getting out, you know, I'm kind of bouncing around. But, uh, see, if, if we get a hard stuff up to a rush, we're going to travel. If we got a guy sitting in here, we had one guy at Utah that defended us just by him. He would not rush, but there was no way they were going to let us run this football play. Then we would come out. That's our basic thing. That's our basic thing. So we would, you know, I talked about the dash. We'd probably run this 10 to 1 over that basic dash. Because again, we just do not like. When we do this, we always, we try to trail somebody. We always try to put somebody over here. Never get in the ball, but you know, stay back there and give us a chance. <laughs> as far as terminology of what your offensive line, I mean, they keep it simple. I mean, do you, do you talk about a base or zone or? Yeah, that's, that's the base. Oh. base. We don't say one word, we're going to do, you know, if, and, and they can slide it. Uh, we slide it and base it and we ban it. Ban this first. But, yeah, but, but the nice thing is, I don't know how you feel about this coach, but I get, and I, I, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know enough about the things, but the fact is, schematically, let me do it. Because I know, you know, I mean, I think I know who we want out, and we don't care if we get out on that particular route. So we will try to control it as opposed to let the lineman control or the line guy control it. Because he doesn't, it's not, it's not important to him, you know, which line we get out. He just wants to take the thing on the quarterback. But, you know, it is important to us. So. Now, this is what I, I eventually want to get to this uh, to ask you guys how you do it. But even when we go to our single back throws, we don't change the text. We don't turn scheme check. I don't know if you guys, you know, you see a lot of turn protection. We, we refuse to do that. All we would try to do is, is see if we come out like this. Sing back and we see a 3 4 let's say we see a 4 3 and I don't know what you guys see. We still block the same way. When we're, now we come out. Now if W comes out here, we know we're okay. If the W comes out and starts shooting in here, now who has to come? The F has to come over here. Now we're going to fall. We're just going to get out. Okay, we're not going to try to turn protection to make hot guys. That's why I went back to my base. That's why I said what I said earlier. All we're going to do is we want to point the W. I come on here, I point the W. The quarterback is down with the W over there. If he's out here, we're not going to worry about it. We know that this guy has that. He has to block him. We're going to block everybody else. If W starts shooting down inside, we either side or just, or we change the Try to keep it simple. You know what I can sense? Probably a little bit different than what you guys do. Right? You guys probably turn it, get it back, you got to go high on it. We just like to keep it simple and possible. Some of the things that we do as far as passing the ball, I mean, like I said, we did a lot of drop back stuff, and then we'll do the bootleg, and then we've got screen. I mean, do you, is that part of your screen? Yeah, yeah, we'll screen it. I can, I can diagram, you know, right up what we do. 
you see, the threat control happens the same way. The threat control happens the same way, but we're going to read it the same way. We're going to read the same downfield if we don't have a gun to come back. We like that because it gives us a chance to get downfield. But as far as running a true screen, we run them there. We just not do that. So, and so you say, you say, eight passes, they're going to, you're going to drop back. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I judge it, obviously, because I'll, I'll show you the adjustments we make, you know, I mean, so every, so 66 for us has probably 10 different options, but when I'm 10 different little doodads that we can do up it. But yeah, if we get enough kind of time, it is the same eight ways, but that's what we want. Okay? On the adjustments, that's on the, jumping around. Yeah. On the adjustments, is, is it already known? Is it on the game plan, or is it an audible? No, we we um, we will call. I mean, uh, I'm sounding like a little selfish, but we will make that call ourselves. I mean, if we see something, we'll make a little bit of an adjustment. But if we don't, we run the play that we call. Now, we do have an audible system, obviously, like everybody else. On, on our game plan, a quarterback only has two choices. In other words, if I when we make a call and he doesn't like it because he sees a different coverage, he only has two choices to go to. Two choices against a man free, two choices against a double. You know, that, that's all he has. So, but the adjustments we make, and again, I'm not trying to sound like I know all that about coaching, but I just think we let us do it. Take, you know, the less you have to worry about, the more effective we are. So I, I think it goes on this great philosophy we talk about. We really spend, we really believe in that stuff. So I, I don't know if we can talk about it, we can have to go out and do it. But yeah. For example, I'm, I'm jumping around. I don't really feel comfortable. I don't, until we get some kind of agenda going, but uh, for example, real quick, we run a little route we call 65, okay? The uh, same idea just like everybody else. Uh, we read it with strong safety, hang, you know, all that, we can get into that tomorrow. Now, a lot of teams take that away by going like this. They take, they take, uh, if we were to come out and call 65, okay? And I'll go into one detail tomorrow. If we, if we run a little route like this, we call it 65, we read the strong safety. Okay, now, but if teams start to take this away by going like this, doing something like that, let me do it. The next time I want to call it, we'll call 65 at angle. Now all that happens is he comes here and tucks back in here. That's what I'm talking about, just right. Okay, so our 65 game, you know, we'll say 65, 65 at angle, and all of the adjustments you want to make the same. But I, you know, let us do that rather than the full back. Okay, that's what I've been about adjustments. Oh, we do this, no? Huh? Okay. Sit down over here. Okay. So you can get more comfortable. <laughs> well, I, I want to address what you all want to hear. I understand. I want us to, let's just talk about what kind of the sequence we'll go tomorrow. Okay. And let's go home and let's do okay. it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, why don't you come and uh, first thing, just, you know, run through your passing down. Okay. And then just tell us as you're going on. One by one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the different <coughs> routes and adjustments off of that, okay. why you would do it, okay. uh, and, and why you wouldn't. Okay. And then about the pace that they put it in, you know, when we start to do it, how fast do y'all go to that? Okay. Kind of like, kind of like, you know, that. Okay. I want to tell you, I've talked about how you implement okay. this okay. in practice from, the, from uh, day one all the way okay. up to the game, the first game. Okay. But also, uh, you know, because then as you You'll, we'll kind of know something where you're coming from a little bit if you call us in. And yeah, and I need to go over like how what we call people over like right. all that stuff. Yeah. Start, yeah. Yeah, let's just yeah. start out with that okay. first thing in the morning. Then, okay. uh, don't know how long that'll take you know, or how long it is. But yeah. But let's progress after that. Okay. That, that makes sense. Okay. Now, it does take a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We might have been breath with that. Yeah. Okay. I want to basically come talk about things you do with uh, <coughs> quarterbacks, with receivers, uh, just to practice, just skill development kind of things. Okay. Uh, you want the running game to tell you You want to talk about, again, with your running backs, you know, how all you use them as receiver and, and talk about how you develop them in practice to be receivers too. Okay. Let's take a one at it like that. Yeah. And, you know, if we've done that, we'll see. 
not like it because of time. He likes to get his rhythm. He likes to get his rhythm going. But what happened is defenses were do so much where it, it required us to come across like this to block a backer. That as we were coming back and he was coming across, we always we would we, we never had a shot at him. So if we just simply stepped him back, now he was able to come across and pick up his protection scheme a lot easier. I don't know the value of the gun other than this. I mean, this to me is the primary reason why I had to talk to that way to go on with that. Because the rhythm and the timing did, I think it's all screwed up. So what I did was I tried to call a bunch of people and just to see, you know, I, to me it's not good to get your eyes off of the, the, the downfield throw, right? Okay, so what we did is finally somebody told us, I can't remember who it is, and it really worked out well for us. We force our quarterback, and we don't do a good job this way, we coach it this way, that you have to catch the ball. <clears throat> you have to get your eyes down on the ball and catch it. Okay, so if it's a five-step drop now, we drop it down to three. If it's a three-step drop, we just take it to one. We make it catch the ball. You know, so many times, as you catch it, you come in like this, and it's all screwed up. We make it catch the ball. <clears throat> now I go one. And it worked out better for us, time-wise. And I think that's what we've been talking about. I don't know if that's good for everybody, but for us, it helps us with our timing. So it allowed Ty to get that rhythm that he, he enjoyed so much. Plus, we made sure we caught the ball. But you can see that now. You don't find any, uh, uh, you haven't gained any time. It's not hard as uh, uh, how long it takes no. to get rid of football. No. Or, we gained a little depth. Yeah, I think. We yeah. gained a little depth, but the primary reason was I think it helped us with our pass flow. It really helped us with our protection. How much did you run the ball out of Enough, enough to keep it going. I know the defense is so good, and they immediately tell us most of the ball We're going to get back yeah. now because here they come. Yeah. The running game seems like right. a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. In fact, the, the runs that we have that we talked about last night is kind of suited for this team. We just run that little trap, and we run a little wide run. So for us, it's not that big. But I have to work at that. I mean, I really have to work at that minute you make the call. Do you know what I mean? When, when we make the call, you know, we want to run, we call it a draw trap. When we run around, you know, it really has to click into your mind. Like, i got to get this guy back to, to keep him off balance just a little bit. You're right. You're right about that. Uh, our line guy would prefer us running this call, the draw trap call, because just like you said, Mark, when, he's, when you're back here, it tells everybody you're going to throw, so they're going to get back. But, so that helps. But now when we run the wide run, everybody's back, and he doesn't like that, because everybody's back, they're going to come up and react to that wide run anyway. But the thing that gets here is what he likes. Okay, I was going to say one more. Anyway, the minute now, defensive guys. I know I agree with this, but the minute a team gets into that 20, that bear, the 27, whatever you guys call it, we got to get the get up there around. This is cougar for us. The line call is cougar. So the minute, the minute <coughs> they cover up like this, we make our quarterback get automatically. He just yells out, cougar, cougar, and he's back into the gun. Because we have seen this, and we couldn't get a guy over here and all this kind of stuff. So we put him in the gun to help us with our pass protection. That's the only way we go. I think it helps protection, and I think it helps depth. I'm not sure to what it does not for us anyway. For what for us? And Denver really fought it because he really enjoyed the, 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 the getting his sink and dropping his feet. I mean, it's dropping and getting his feet set. Okay, that's good. Anything else? <coughs> okay. I wrote down in my notes so I knew where we were headed. Uh, Progression-wise in practice, progression-wise in practice, the way we handle it is we go, um, we warm up, and this maybe you guys, this maybe you'd have some input too. We, we, a couple, three years ago we had, we, we, we were having a lot of problems with sore arms because the cues would come out and they'd warm up and then they'd be ready to go by the time we started practice, okay? And we really overused them. I think we really had some problems. So again, I tried to, just ask people that I knew, call people, how do you guys are? We finally decided that when the team starts to stretch, when the team starts to stretch, is when we pick up the ball. I do not allow the quarterback to come out early and warm up on his own. If we start at 3.30, 3.30 is a stretch. At 3.30, you pick up the ball up and warm, warm yourself up. So 
normally there's a 10 minute stretch period, that's when they, they, they get a chance to do so. Okay, we do not allow them to come out before and think around and throw the ball around. Anyway, we come out and we stretch for 10, then we have a 10 minute individual period. That's all we have, where the quarterback's working on his drops and, and doing what he's doing, and receivers are running little drills, uh, ball catching drills, blocking drills. Then we, that's it. That's the only time they, they're by themselves. We take another 10, 15 minutes of uh, just one on one, just throwing the ball to the receivers, starting out a little easier routes. The quarterback's now loosen up even more. Then we go to a period we call five versus air. That we really, to me, the best teaching period that we have. Uh, where we just line up everybody, back receivers, everybody against air. Okay? And, and I was listening, I was telling Jack, we were at a clinic a couple weeks ago, and a guy that I really admire, uh, Dave Levy, was talking about this drill. And he had the guys all lined up, and he had the backs like this. And he said, you have to. In fact, I was just looking at my notes last night when we kind of set a direction. He said, you have to have three quarterbacks to win football. I don't know if you guys do this, but you have to have three quarterbacks to win football, these guys. And I, I, I totally disagree, only not, not because he's, I mean, Dave Levy's a guy I really admire. But we don't do it that way. We have one guy because we want him to be making the read at all times. We want him to be paying attention to what's what the read will be. So if we go five versus there, it's actually five versus the coach. I stand here, and whichever place I, I think that the key part of the read is, is where I stand. And only one ball, so these other four guys will not get the ball, which is what, where Dave and I would differ because he thinks that receiver should be getting balls all the time, which I agree with, but I'd rather give that up <laughs> to let this guy know what he should be doing. Okay, so it's just five versus me, actually. Okay, then we go from there to uh, we go from there to a preparation team. We bring a preparation team over and, and we align them the way we want to align them. Then we go from there to one on one. Where we bring our varsity defense over. We take ten minutes. We get ten minutes one on one every single day, every single day. And then we go to what we call varsity seven on seven, varsity skeleton. And then we go to team. So you guys just see that, so you can see the amount of throwing that the cubes are doing. The first part of team is now becomes uh, what we call blitz pickup. The first, the first part of team, while we're in Skelly, the, the offensive linemen are in blitz pickup. Okay? So we have to share the backs. Then when we get over in the team, the first 15 minutes is team blitz pickup. So the quarterbacks are throwing then also. Then we go to a goal line session, then we go to a red zone session, then we go to a team session, and the team's put on their coach, and that's it for them. They won't, you know, they won't the ball again. Okay? So that's, that's the way we would organize what we're trying to do. Okay. The, the organization now, continuing the organization is, 50s for us is a three-step. 60s is the five and seven step stuff. 70s is a weak side throw. We've about taken it out of the playbook, but we're going to bring it back because we don't have a tight end that we feel real comfortable with yet. All that is for us is line up in something like this with an offset eye, and we're coming weak. <laughs> he becomes the tight end on this side, so we free release him. We bring him back in his protection here. He's back in his protection there. So we, we have the same idea, but if you see a lot of strong stuff, we play this, so we're not seeing enough strong to make this a, a worthwhile package for us. But that's our 70 series, a weak side throw series. Okay? And then 80s is that, that thing we talked about last night. Eight, because this is for us 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 on the run holes, 80 is a sprint right, 90 is a Again, we don't watch that. We changed that around there, I think, from when you were when you were there. Now we're gonna run that dash series, then it becomes 80 or 990. With the same idea I means that's dash week, dash draw. Okay? That's our throwing stuff. Then if we're gonna go play pass, we're gonna go play action pass. Um, say we're gonna run here. <laughs> That's for us, this is draw chapter 33. If we're going to go play pass, we just go A. 
33 tells us now it's, it's air 33, and that's the way I came back. Yeah, to make it easier for us. We decided, well, I don't know if this is very interesting, but we last year spent some time with the guys from the Bengals, and we went into games with the no how We went strictly no how It's really, to me, an exciting, interesting idea because of a lot of reasons. One is, you know, you catch them off guard a little bit. But two is you get about three or four times the practice run. I don't know how you guys are like us, but we spend so damn so much time in the huddle that, that we, you know, practice time, you get a script and you never get through the last. So now we practice no huddle. Whether we do it in the ballgame or not, we practice the no huddle simply because it, it gives us more reps. It gives us a lot more reps. And actually, and actually, all it is, and we, we tried to emphasize this from the start, we're, we're not in a hurry up offense. All we're doing is telling you what we normally tell you in the huddle at the line of scrimmage. It's no big deal. It don't, don't think you have to hurry, don't do anything. But it, it just, it quickens the tempo, and it really helps us. We go into our initial ball game last year, and, and uh, and we decided not to do it, because it's always easy to get back in the huddle. So we get back in the huddle, we play a game, we, we, we did okay. We play our second ball game, it's UCLA, and we can't make the damn first down for all the money in the world. So we say, screw it, we're, we're not going to get this game. Anyway, let's get, get into our no huddle. And after the game, we didn't win the game, our boys keep coming to a particular item. So anyway, that was our, it was our third game. After we talked to Donnie, who's a real nice fellow, and he said that it, it screwed them up. I mean, they screwed them up only because everything, you know, they, they were substituting situationally and, and, and it just screwed up the flow of the game. So that's, I guess I'm telling that for a lot of reasons. One, that's why we go 833, and that's why we have the numbers that we have. Is that it allows us to go through the entire ball game without going through the house for those reasons. The Cincinnati Bengals play a coach that, the way he said it was that it cuts in half the defensive variables. I don't know how you guys would react to it, but it cuts in half. So I said, you're trying to tell me that if you're planning to play against 10 coverages, you figure you can only see five now. And he said, yeah. So I don't know whether that would be any interest to you. Here's the question I got. Why didn't you do it more? Why didn't we do it more during the course of the game? It's because what it required was a little more effort on our part. In other words, we have to signal in. I don't like signaling in place for one. Yeah. Okay. And then it required the quarterback picking that thing up. And and then, you know, obviously executing the play. The efforts between you and the quarterback. Yes. That's where the yes. tough part That's was. where the tough part was. Right. We did do it. We did it, I would guess, not as much as I would like to see it. I, I convinced Lavelle last spring, the spring before last, that we had to do it 100% of the time. That, like the Bengals, we had to come out and do it. And he was very reluctant. You know, I was the head coach. He's very, very reluctant to do that. But I, but, but he said, okay, you know, do what you want. And and and, and the the communication between the Q, just getting the play run, yeah. we did not give it enough of an effort. You know, you gotta have a signal now. <coughs> the last thing that comes. So in other words, you're really taking your normal tempo, the same tempo they take to get to a huddle. They're just gonna take. They're just gonna come. Well, I'm gonna walk. You know, they're yeah. just gonna walk to the yeah. line. Yeah. They're not actually. Yeah. It's not a hurry up. It's yeah. just we're not gonna huddle. But, it, but it, if, 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 yeah, if somebody told you it would cut your defensive variables in half, yeah. oh, you yeah. know, jump at that, right? And then secondly, you get the plays run. He said during the course of the season, they figured they'd average two or three more plays a day, yeah. you know, on the average. Which two or three more plays a game is two or three more plays a game. You uh, typically call plays by sending them in? Or yeah. We, we so run a four don't, or two. You don't signal until you're going up there. Yeah. No, huh? Yeah. See that that's a problem. That's a little bit of a hand. And then that's something you gotta deal with. But you know, and it took so much time. And what I tried to convince our guys of was that um, we were having how much how can I explain this? The play calling was becoming too important. In other words, all this garbage was becoming too important. Yeah, it, that has to be secondary. I mean, the execution of the play and the being in the proper place has to be, has to take, you know. But 
Uh, it, did, it does, the, the plus side always the neighbor side. When you tried to do it, did you, were you the one that did the signals? No. Who did it? The, the back of the quarterback. Back of the quarterback. You're in the press I'm box? I'm in the press box. Okay, so I never changed one thing I was doing. Who are you talking to? The offensive line guy. And then he talks to the he quarterback? He talks to the two quarterbacks. Right. And then they signal it. They signal it. Now, now, normally, I talk to the offensive line coach, and he just he repeats the play of the receiver. Okay? So he has to repeat it anyhow. Mm -hmm. And and so he just repeats it to the two guys, and one of them you want to do. Um, go ahead. Well, go ahead, please. The, 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 the upside is that if, if the first question I ask that, you know, when we talk about it, when I was trying to convince the guy, I said, okay, call a play for me on the last scrimmage. I said, what do you call me? Tell me how you do it. I said, okay. In the hollow, we'd say red, right, 65. At the last scrimmage, we'd say red, right, 65. No big deal. Yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, I, I can, we, we'll have those just out there, but, but, but that's all we did. Yeah. Red, right. And he said, I don't know if you got well, we They don't pay attention to that. Yeah, you know, they got, they got no problems figuring out where the hell they line up, right? And they think that they have to react because of their. And they're going to panic. They think it's yeah. a speed deal, yeah. and they're going to panic. Plus, yeah. And no. our, our fat linemen have trouble from here to here. I'm not kidding. We walk. We watch too much TV. You know, we walk up the pro guys. Now they're right here anyway. They're right there anyway. And they just turn it loose. And uh, you know, we have code words. The Bengals said that. Yeah, I've talked to this guy here. The Bengals said they came up with a whole brand new terminology. I mean, they had a whole new set of words that they used. Finally, Sam White says, sure. We yeah. just go back to what we're normally saying. You know, it's for, for 65 of them, they had da 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 and, and so did we. We tried to get it that way. Now, the code. The yeah. code. Yeah. And they had a whole new English language. And it wasn't really necessary. Yeah. It wasn't really necessary. For example, they said, and, and you can come up and kids, and, and, and the other thing they said was, which we do a lot, we let the kids decide. We let the kids, hey, what do you think we should call this if we're in a no how? And they come up with it, and then they remember it because it's their deal. They had a, you know, when, when they ran the sweep, they had, you know, you put your back on a strong safety as opposed to putting your, your guard on a strong safety or whatever. They said, you know, they called it boss, back on a strong safety. But the way they remembered it was that Bruce Springsteen is the boss, right, in, in his music. So the boss was that. And, and you, you, stuff like that, you never forget it. You know, you won't forget that because Bruce Springsteen is the boss. So we have, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if you guys want to deal with that, but for us it's helpful. Y'all being a growing team, so obviously y'all see a lot of people who just specifically, they go certain, they, they see lots of stuff, see lots of DBs in here. You find the best event. You eliminate. You oh, eliminate all yeah. their extras. If they're going to put them in there, they got to keep them in there because yes. they really don't have time to. Yeah. And, when, and in reality, they would. Yeah. In reality, they would. You could get in whatever you want. But see, if we catch them, if we catch you with any kind of, a, like we did at UCLA when, they, when we first had it, we caught them in just a little bit of uncertainty. We just we just call them alert. Alert. We just say alert. Alert. Hot. We stamp them on the floor. So what you find is they're going to have to get in something to sound both running and passing. Yeah. And, 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 and that's why I say the variables get cut. You haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. In, you haven't played against it. No. Yeah. See, we would use. We use it. We use it. I think. Yeah. Not a half. Not. 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 Not a half. Well, I'm just kind of sitting here imagining it. it would be a nightmare if they did it the whole game. It would be to a nightmare. me. It would be a nightmare if they did. Totally. Now, if they just want to, if it's a team that's going to do it for a series or two, that's going to be a deal. But yeah. a secondary coach, if a team did that whole game, that'd be a nightmare. Yeah. And 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 we really, I, I had my brothers. I would do it. That, we would do it that way. We talk about the know-how way, okay. um, And we are going. We did it all spring, you know. And, and again, I got to convince the the, the boss. But, but you know, as much as we can, instead of using it as a changeup, use it just down after down. After. And it changes tempo. And the, the, the guy's name is Jack. You know Dana the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Talk to him. The guy is unbelievable <coughs> the way they set up. And all it is is talking at the line of scrimmage instead of in the huddle. And our kids like it. Our kids really like it. But your linemen really like it. By the third quarter, our linemen are. <laughs> because they have, you know, you got to get in better shape. But, uh, but again, the pluses are the defensive variables and the. Uh, Practice time. You get a lot more practice time. Because you're not in a hole. Anyway, yeah, that was a little bit off the subject, but I wanted to get to that in the next minute. What else about that?
that, that, that uh, your, your question about why we didn't do it more, I think it is because of the fact that we were all, you know, we would, we would screw the thing up, the signal lines. Um, okay, anyway, that's our system, that's our sit up like that. Okay? Now we, you want to go into the, we're going to the fast, fast, uh, fast, fast patterns. Okay, and this, let me, let me just, I'll go, I'll go one by one, but this is also the way we talked about uh, <coughs> implementation uh, 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 during two days. For the very, the very first day, we'll put in, I mean, the very first session, we'll put in all of what we call, let me, let me impress you, all horizontals. I'm BSing you, but all of the horizontal stretches, vertical stretches, we have BYU you have the oblique stretch. How's that? You ever down every day? It's good 20. Good 20. <laughs> horizontal, vertical, we go oblique. And really, when you think about it, all your pass routes are oblique stuff anyway. But you put a guy here, you put a guy there, you put a guy there. So we're oblique stretch team. Try to impress you with terminology. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good clinic stuff. All right, so the very first day now, we're going to put in our mirrored stuff. The very first session, we will always start with our mirrored stuff. The first route we like to run, we'll run this a ton. It's, it's very simple. We just go like this at 14, speeds of 10 to 12. At 66 for us. Okay? This stuff doesn't matter. I guess all the only thing matters for it, so I'll make sure I cover it all. And the read is very simple. We read the middle backer. We read the middle backer for direction. If you are four under team, this is for us bread and butter. Okay? If you're a four under team, this is for us. The, the first step tells us where we're going to throw it. So I take one step, my eyes are up on the middle backer. If he goes weak, we come strong, we go strong, we come weak, we go straight back, we come weak. And this will help us, Jack, this is one thing that will help us along the, with, the, with the change in the hash marks. Okay, so say we're playing a 4 3 piece. If he comes weak, they've got two, we've got two, we got three, they've got two. He comes strong now, he takes him away, they've got three. We got two and they got one. So all the mouse too. Okay? On the jump board I got the chance. Alright? Against a three deep zone type team. Very, very basic for us. The first step, we tell our cube on the first step back, you gotta know which side you're coming. If he might go weak, if Mike goes weak, we're coming inside out. One, two, three. If Mike goes strong, we're coming inside out. One, two. Okay, sixty-six plus. You guys probably run the very basic. I mean, the same thing off the Okay. Now the adjustments we'll make. If we see a 500 team, if we get screwed up and see a 500 team, I guess that's it. Then it's a lousy call, actually. Um, we'll go 66, what we call 66 wide bench. Then all we're going to do is change the, change these two guys. We're taking him on a bench and taking the pullback up the shoot. Same route. Everybody stays the same. To give you a little different look, 66 wide bench. Okay? Um, now we're telling Jack, with, uh, again, we're telling our quarterbacks, stay strong side. Stay strong side, just read inside out. One, well, actually, we're reading outside in. One, two, three. Don't forget about the mic backer. We know what we think we're seeing. We just want to come outside in. And wide bench. That change. Yeah, actually, let me, let me clarify something. Every, when we call our 60 pattern, the, 60, the first six tells the line what's going on in the Texas game. The second number is just rope memorization. You just have to memorize that pattern, that six pattern. Okay? And the cube knows what he has to get done on that. On that. And then since we only have eight of them, I don't think it's too tough for the cube to know really what's going on. Okay? Every package, every pattern has its own read, its own set of things I got to look at. Not telling your receivers the pattern you're going to do no. the same thing. Like yeah, no. the other yeah. Six. yeah, 
the other six, they have to learn from the other six, from the second division. Okay? I mean, like, like a lot of protein is on 848, right? That's an 8, that's a 4, that's an 8. A lot of guys go 848, uh, C, post or something, and that tells the backs. We just go 6. six. The second 6 tells you what you have to do. When you're teaching, you don't call that. Take it. When you're teaching, you don't, you don't call on the right pattern. No. When you first start on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't even have a treat. We don't have a treat. We just, I got the rest of that. fell asleep though. We don't even have a treat. We have routes that we run. I mean, this is a curl for us. Okay, but, but I don't, if we come out and we're running with just individual routes warming up, I don't say, okay, we're, well, I do. We're wrong with curls. Right? Early on, especially with the young freshmen, I always say, okay, let's go 66. Even though it's just our receivers and the quarterback running one at a time, it's 66. They have to learn it by six. But when you think about it, that's what I was trying to, I think I said last night, there's only eight of them. There's only eight of them that you have to learn. So we don't have a, an actual tree. We have a tree, but we don't utilize it. Okay. Well, it's yeah. 66. Yeah. Five slash seven step. How do you determine whether that's a five or a seven? Or seven? That's what I said. We got to. We got the quarterback. Quarterback to know it. That's a five. That's a five. Five and a half step. They're all going to be five and a half step backs. Now they're not. I mean, I'm, I'm lying. But it's five and a half. But, but like I said, it may. You know, when we get to it, I think we'll, we'll get a little better idea. This is five and a half. Okay. But like Probably I said, tell me what you mean, five and a half. One, two, three, four, five, and we bring it up. Yeah, okay. And you've got to let them have it. When you bring that baby up, you've got to let them have it. I'm going to ask you a question, too. When we started this, we got out there, and uh, our receivers can't go 14 yards. No five steps. I told them about a weekend. Our quarterback will be ready to throw before they can get to that. We're waiting on it. Really. Okay. That's, that's, that's the, only I, the only way I can respond to that is when Doug Skoll first got there, when he kind of put this in the world, I told Jack, we, the profession we have, and I, I feel very fortunate because I worked with Doug Skoll and, and Wally English and Ted Tone before the bill, like, before the dad, well, that's the thing. Doug Skoll got set up. I don't know if he's going to He passed away a couple years ago with Randall Cunningham with the evening. It was a Saturday afternoon, I'll never forget the news. The team had worked out, gone home, he went on the exercise bike, and the fun fell over the bed. And fell right off the bed. Anyway, what he did, I'll never forget, because I was just starting, I was a high school guy, and I just can't, I just, what he did, Ted, was he actually went out and timed it. We had McMahon at the time. He went out and timed it, and he made McMahon get back as quick as he could. And then he went to, he let the receivers go. He stood there and tried to make his decision on what the, the yardage would be. You know, he, he, is that right? And, and for us, it was 14 was okay. So that the minute I go like this, I make my turn here, the ball should be in on its way. And, and that doesn't work for you guys. we well, got slow white guys too. Uh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> uh, five, you're slow white guys. Go five. Seven and step work better for us. Isn't that something? Now, let me just say that uh, there's lots of times we were trying to make defensive people turn in a certain way, these, these kind of things. And our patterns ended up deeper in the other team yards. In other yeah. words, an out may be 17 yards. Yeah. Yeah. We might have been going deeper than the 13 yeah. yards. That, uh, yeah. But uh, we, we, no, I, in fact, I'm harping. The thing that I'm harping at all the time is I said 14. I didn't say 13 and a half. I didn't say 14. I said 14. And it is a straight line 14 yard run. Now we'll get into the bump and the press and all that, you know, later, but it's a 14 yard sprint. That's all. I don't want any wiggle. I don't want any. I just want you to get those point, 14 yards on a turn turn with the ball. That's how we coach ours. And, and like I said earlier, I stand back there. I stand at 14 or stand at 14 and a half, and they got to make that, you know, break in front of me. So we don't, we, you know, I don't know if uh, I'm saying it right, but we don't allow that. I mean, I said 14. I didn't say, and every time we run an individual route, we start, we run our three-step stuff for the kids to warm up, and then this is the first route we come. That's, the, that's how we start our, our run. So five and a hitches work for us. Uh, you know, obviously I don't know. No, 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 no. But for us, the only guy that has a little bit of leeway is this guy. If 
to get bumped and pushed, and he has to get a field goal. He'll cut his arm down or either. But we'd like him to get two tennis balls. Now, yeah, what are your backs key in there? Nothing. The backs aren't doing a thing. They're checking their protection. They're checking their protection. They come out. We, we try to check it on the run. If I'm at this left and back, I come here. I look for my guy. If I'm not there, I just continue on. And do it. Oh, back these two? Same idea. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I mean, that's what we, we I should get to that. Now, the 4-3 alignment, the point three alignment like this, is this. Okay, the point three alignment is like that. Um, we, and we try to do it on a move. Like I said, we arc, we, we arc release it here, protect my guy, and the next step is right here. Now again, we don't have the kind of speed that we need to have. So this, this is not even a, like this. This is, we call this an arrow. Hit you. Out there. <laughs> you know, because uh, you got to move the coach. You got to move the underneath. Side the so this is a straight line shot past the stem of the receiver. Did you put three center just this in there? Yeah, the guard. Yeah, yeah. Off. yeah. 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 So four three will zone you. You know, nine percent of the time. He'll come back, check his mic, and then. But we don't bring him back out or anything. If this guy comes, we're gonna block a back block. And then, like I told Paul last night, if, if, if this guy comes back and oh, geez, where are my backs, he knows that if the backs are now come, figure man, figure man, we'll make a decision. We'll run this ball a lot. We'll run this ball a lot. What's a split on your two lines? Basically, split according to the route that's called. But don't. To, we don't allow them to split. We don't allow them to align twice in the same spot. In other words, they gotta every time whether it's a run or a pass, they gotta vary the split. But we don't have 12 yards outside of the tight end. No, we don't do that. I mean, that's kind of a cop out answer. But, but you know, if you're on a hash mark, wherever you are on a football field, just use your judgment to get where you gotta go. We don't spend a lot of time on this practice. We don't have. <laughs> Here's the middle of the field. You wouldn't say halfway no. between no. half no. and half. No. Yeah. Where do you want those two curls to end up on the field? Yeah. If you're on the if you're in the left, middle, if you're on the left hash mark, let's say. Where do you want that? We don't. We I, I guess in response, we don't use landmarks. We just get out, get out. Do you, 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 you turn them in? Get out. You come to the inside field as you run your route. Just nothing. Like just flying get out. Get out. No, no. The receivers aren't required to do any of it. The quarterback's doing the whole thing. Quarterback is just doing it. Now, if they're in a 500, if they're in a 500 deal, if you got 500 people, it's a lousy route to run. This is strictly against the 400 people. All right, I'm just still thinking, okay. So this guy, I'm not, it's not a cop I'm just, that's the reason we don't shut over. He may catch this ball one time, he catch it. He'll catch it different places than on the Field. The receiver, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. The receiver comes, and his we run a curl like this. We plan our foot and come right back to the ball. Yeah, okay, directly back to the ball. Now, if if someone is between me and the, the quarterback and myself, then I just I get around, yeah, find the window. So I don't want to, I don't want to say, okay, you got to take seven steps and you got to turn. I think, and and Dana, I talked to Dana and I were visiting. He, he, he termed it right, and I've used it ever since. The very common sense approach to throwing football. Okay, whereas you know you can be a lot more rigid. We, uh, we, uh, you know, if you're not open, get your hand. That's all. You know, if, you, if he's in the way, move to the next window. If he's not in, move to the next window. <laughs> That's all. I know you probably sitting there going, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. You got to find a receiver. I understand. Yeah. We, we just don't see much of this defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't need it. We don't need it. We don't, we don't see a lot of 3 or 400. We, 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 we're seeing a lot more roll week. We're seeing a lot more Jack and yeah. Thomas as a week rotation. Okay. Um, and when we see the week rotation, we will, uh, you know, then come to this stuff. When we played Penn State, what Penn State was, was doing was rolling their, their front into the boundary and rolling their coverage to the field. But we just, we, you know, we knew that. We just kept running this season. Let me, you know, 
Keep going and we'll see. Yeah, then you'll be safe. Yeah, yeah. Are there other adjustments to security? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we, let me just take, yeah, I'll just take one second. Okay, we, we, uh, what we would do is, is try to film stuff, try to game plan it, and, and decide who you like to bring more. Okay? okay. If you like to bring your inside folks more, then we'll need face fair enough. If you like to bring your outside folks more, then we'll need slide. We're going to put the back on the factor that is least in the least more comfortable. Okay, now, we don't know. It just happens more than, more than not. If we don't know, you know, you don't have a tendency, then we'll, we'll double read you. We'll do what we call them. We you know we'll, we'll double read here. Mike, both guard and back look to Mike. Mike drops, guard comes out, back's free. Mike comes, we block him, he has to turn out. So we'll double read that. In fact, that'll be our basic call. We come out and say red right 66. That's automatic. Double read. We go about uh, 40 back and lower. Yeah, come back and back. Okay, now, the nice thing about this two kid is, is uh, I get to take care of it. That's why I told the guys, like, I, I, you know, I know who's back. I think we need to get out into the pass route. So if we can't handle this guy, which is really a, a concern, obviously, when you got both guys slider, you need this guy and I, then we'll decide which guard can stay in. Uh, let me ask you right here, if, if they kill, you a strong linebacker inside. Would you all try to do a little flexing or something with the tight end and make him come out and when you dive in? Uh, here, if we see the 20, say if we see the bunch of the bear rope, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Our first, our first move against the bears is to flex the tight end. Yeah. Right. That's it, right now. I watched a little bit of that cut up last night and he was flexed. Uh, it seemed like three to one. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it, half the time it didn't look like it was a tight end, but yeah. a white, yeah. a white guy, yeah. 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 or a little guy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little faster, a little faster guy, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. So now, now, um, well, three, four alignment, or your fifty-two alignment. Um, we talked about meeting Mike. Now this is this becomes Mike. Second backer into whip we call Mike. Okay, because if you're, if you're a strong zone team, the tendency is to bring him, right? Which makes him stud, him Mike, and right. whip. So that's how we read it. We don't like it, obviously, because they go by runner. That's what I, I never forget when we're putting all this in. Doug used to call this guy Mike, and this guy was fourth. That guy was F, which meant he was the fourth backer. I guess when they went from, historically, when they went from a 4 3 to a 3 4, that became the additional backer. So he called him Mike for that for this reason and this reason alone. As the cube now, that's Mike as far as the three four as opposed to the five four. Okay. Okay. Normal are there uh, bench was an adjustment to sixty six. Yeah. Are there others? Or is that uh, yeah, but I'd rather hold back. I'll get to this later. That okay. is until boundary throw that I'll get to that in a second. I was gonna show I am this big, yeah. For us, 14 is worth Well, no, and the reason he wants to go at least 14, he went 13 yards, is he felt like that at the depth you turn it. That's right. Yeah. So turn the guy. You yeah. don't turn the corner. If you go on an yeah. eight yard pattern, yeah. you're going to get covered. Yeah. And you're not worried about exactly. turning anybody anywhere. No. Just, no. just get run it. and get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm always hopping. And I'm, we'll go with the next one. I'm always hopping to receive. Get, you know, get up, get up, get up. Because yeah. you're not quick enough to begin with. <laughs> you stand up, you're not down in a in track stand. And, and a cube, I'll, when I go to the next one, I'll show you how we coach for that. They, they're tired of me saying that because they know the reason why we're doing it. We can't, you know, we've got to get to that point. And, and I don't wiggle, don't do anything. We just run like you run. At one point, too, I want to talk about what do you do when you guys come up and get all yeah. in your guys, and you can't just yeah. take off. Yeah. Good. Should we wait for him or should we go? Yeah. Right. You're gonna, this guy's not in the play. This guy right. is not in the football play. He has got his team critical. And you've yeah, got to sell him. You've got to sell So it's not, it's anything. That's why, if we do, 
I know, I, again, I don't mean to brag. If we do anything right, we tell our receivers, get off the line of scrimmage. I tell the receiver, this is my big coach play. If I see you on the film one time, not get off the line of scrimmage, you're running past you, rest on the bench. you out of the ballgame. You have got to come off. I, coach, I don't know if you know Jack, there's a guy, Richie Stuber, a real good friend of mine, with Edmonton now. He said, the only difference between playing BYU and playing other teams, he said, as a defensive back coach, I could tell who was going to get the ball. But that's how it came off the ball. And, and, and you guys, really, everybody came off the line of scrimmage. And that made me feel a little good because I think, you know, again, I'm not trying to tell myself to be bragging. It's just that we, that's, that we pride ourselves in. Get off the line of scrimmage. That's the real, you know, like you to catch the ball or sit on the bench. That's what he said. Okay? Keep we going. really emphasize that. All right. That's 64, 66. I'll go into, I'm, ta I'm teaching now, I'm, I'm showing it as to how we teach it, you know, implementing it also. It's still the first morning of two it. Then we'll get to 64. Which is again, you don't like this and as you play. If you're not wondering now, you're gonna wonder now. Okay, now we bring it in a little bit, and it's the mirrored house. That's the mirrored house for us. And all we're doing here is we're telling this is the only route where we require uh, a proper split space. Okay? A foot alignment. If I'm this receiver here, we require him to keep his outside foot back. Okay, his outside foot back. And I go one, two, and the third time my outside foot hits the ground, I can I can widen just a little and I bring this over like this. A speed cut, we call it. Okay? You know, you're gonna think I'm a crazy coach. One, two, three, I can widen, I bring this thing out here. Like that. Okay? You tell a quarterback. One, two, three, four, five, open throw. Period. You gotta make your decision. Open, you have got to get rid of the ball. Robbie Bosco, when he was playing, he could get so mad at me that whatever he did was too slow. Whatever whenever he set up to throw the ball wasn't good enough. Okay, the first couple days of practice, the only thing I'm yelling, get it up, get it up, get it up. And he would go because he was so fired up at me that I was yelling at him all the time. Okay, strictly done by the rotation of coverage. If we, Bob, the guy that I also might used to call it the best located safety. If they look, if there is some kind of look like this, at the first step, if he goes straight back or goes weak, the ball's coming here because there is some kind of strong rotation. If he goes weak side, if he goes weak side, the ball's coming strong. Right now. And whatever you do, it ain't good enough. Because you're going to, you know, obviously the guy takes the ball away. It's 60 other way. Okay? And then we just, all we do now is he, we, and the first step, he sees what's going on. As he turns to, 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 uh, to throw the ball weak, he, he, he sees W. W is held in here with the back to throw the ball out here. This, this diagram probably not as accurate as it should be. There's a line here. Some kind of line right here. And then you just go along. One, two, three, four, five. Don't mess around. Get the dead dumb ball up. With one exception now. <clears throat> With one exception, and that is if they're in five under man or in some kind of man. I mean, some kind of man. Five under man. If they're in five under man, he becomes one and one only. It's the only guy you can do a ball. They shoot us, they got us, get the ball, this is an option route, get away route. We just tell them, you just shake yourself loose. If it's any kind of zone, he sits himself like that. Okay, question. Okay. That's 64 for us. We've run it since day one. Okay, now, what does that split in the depth of these folks? He's going to end up, yeah. It's, it's, it's counting steps. So he's going to end up, we figure, coach, between eight and eleven. That's, that's what we would do. And, 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 and if you drew this route, diagram it properly, it would, I think it should look like that. Now around that baby. Yeah, around that baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and not plant and not do anything. And I'm, like I said, coaching wise, we're telling him when, when I flip my head around like this, the ball should be right in my helmet. Right now. I want the ball to live that quickly. And, and you've got to get up, you've got to get up, you've got to get up. And you're up in the court all that. 
Now, the one thing we have done, I think we've done okay since Douglas here. Well, I'm a, for us, when you reach that fifth step, if this is the line, say, right there, the, the center's butt, when I hit that fifth step, I want to be about like this. I want to be, I don't want to be like this, I want to be about like this. Yeah, the way I taught it is the line, Prove it, the line step, because now my hips are open a little bit before that throw back. Okay? I don't want to be like this, I don't want to be like this, I just want to be with my hips open so I can throw that move ball. We work on that. So it's a fair, fair amount. So my hips are open now. If I come up, if I got to come here, I think it's easier to come here and have to come there. Does that make any sense? Okay? So if we draw that imaginary line, in fact, that's for 10 minutes. That's what we spend a lot of time and I want to end up like this. Well, for this ball. For this reason. Okay? The adjustment to this would be if you're in a five under. If you're in a five under, it looks like we're going to pick you up on the fade. But lousy call. Lousy call. And then you five under small. What else? Any other questions? I mean, like I said, whatever we do during practice is not good enough. The so is never, the quarterback is never quick enough for living the ball. They will get yelled at. In fact, some will cheat on us. Cheat on me and go only go three. But they'll always be getting the ball, get the ball, get the ball. And they'll hear about it for at least the first week or two days when we try to get this one. Okay, any? I mean, can I go on? Yeah, this is before. You guys are talking about this. Yeah. Okay. Now, we talked about the stretches. When we're through, when we're through, our basic idea. We're going to have one weak side stretch, one middle stretch, 